Hey, welcome to this Command Modern Air Naval Operations gameplay video. If you love modern battle simulations, then don't miss a minute of what's coming up. Well, hey, welcome. It's time to do something completely different. I've been wanting to learn to play Command Modern Air Naval Operations since it came out, and I own the game and most of the DLC. I've spent all that money and I've never been able to bring myself to play it. And I'm going to be just be straight up. The game is a subject of which I'm intensely interested, but the game itself makes me crazy. The, uh, the interface is um, challenging. <laughs> That's a nice way to put it. But I'm, uh, I, I've, I've embarked on a on a, a program of learning and I thought, well, I'll learn how to play this and then I'll do some videos. And it struck me that I might not live long enough to learn how to play this and then do videos. So why don't we get in and actually do some of the tutorials, let you see what it takes to learn this thing if you've never jumped into it before. Um, now I have been given a link to a really good guide to uh, setting up and learning this game. It's called, in fact, Start Here, the step-by-step. -step. Just bought it. Read this first. Guide to Setting Up and Learning Command Modern Air Naval Operations. It's uh, in the guides at Steam by a fella named Nimrod X. I will link it in the description. And I've already done some of the things that it, re that it suggests in terms of interface work. Um, and you're seeing part of it here. Uh, this is the message window that has, uh, oh, that was good, that has been brought out as a separate window. And I'm going to move it to my other monitor, which is a very good idea if you have another monitor to get that out of the way. Um, so another thing is uh, the game does have in-game sounds and in-game music, but I find the music oppressively loud and there's no way to adjust it individually. So I've turned that off. So I guess it's just going to be my voice, the occasional bang, bang, and uh, you. Uh, so what do you say we'll go ahead and start the new scenario? Um, tutorials, submarine tutorial. So, basic submarine operations, introduction to submarine operations. Uh, it's a four hour game time. Uh, locations of Mediterranean Sea. First in the series of tutorials. So, how to control the depth, heading, and speed of your submarine, how to operate submarine sensors, how convergence zones work, how to plot and intercept, and how to engage surface targets with torpedoes. Let's load it up. Now, the briefings will be giving me pop-ups, uh, and I think I may leave them on this screen. I could move them off just like that to the other monitor, but I think we'll go ahead and just uh, leave that here. Let's enter this scenario, and this is, you know, uh, I don't know. There's all kinds of things that goes on here that make any sense. Let's get this out of the way. Now, you're getting these messages here. Uh, you're also getting them, and I'll move it back over here, in the message log. So, um, come on now, move that off screen. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. So we start by setting a heading speed and depth that is appropriate. So we press the F3 key to activate plot course command and click somewhere north of your submarine. So once you set a waypoint, just press escape to get out of this mode. Okay, first we have to select the submarine. And then we can drag this out and let's go ahead and click a waypoint there. I see if you don't press escape, you can put, you know, multiple waypoints, but we're going to go ahead and get out of that mode. Then we're going to hit the F2 key. So we're hunting a surface target, so set the depth to shallow and your speed to creep. Okay. Well, there's creep, which might have something to do with my personality. I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> now, there's no OK here. You just close this. And then we hit the Start Resume button, which should kill this dialogue. And another one will pop up uh, here in a little bit. Now, 
right now it's running in real time, one second to one second, and you can see it should be showing up. The submarine is speeding up, and it is slowly coming up in depth. Let's go ahead and go five to one. I think I've also got it so that if I right click, yeah, that's right, right click centers. It doesn't center it. Yes. Okay. All right. Now that we're underway, let's quickly examine submarine sensors. So I'm not going to go through this in any detail. Radar, ESM, visual, sonar. So we proceed on the modern, no, modern, the northern course and see if we can detect the merchant using passive sonar. So let's go ahead and resume again. You can see he's coming up in depth again, still making five knots, cruising along. Uh, now we've got another message. Passive sonar performance is affected by several factors, but in this tutorial, we're most concerned by depth and speed. The speed of our submarine has a significant effect on sonar performance. Slower speeds reduce own ship noise and increase the range at which a detection can be made. Depth effects where sounds will most readily reach the sonar from. That's not a very good sentence. Anyway, surface contacts will be detected more readily by a submarine at periscope depth or shallow depth due to the surface duct. Okay, so not only the sentence is kind of odd, my ability to read is even worse. There are a number of other factors that come into play, but for now, we just need to be aware that the best place of finding our targets is at shallow depth and creep speed. Other tutorials will delve deeper into the workings of passive sonar. Let's resume again. And all this time, we've made it up to 600 feet, roughly. I could go faster. Things kind of get out of control. Let's go ahead. Oh. Before I do that, we've got another message. Contact. We have detected the merchant. It's in a convergence. It's a convergence zone contact. We know this because of the area of uncertainty I'll read this again. We know this because the area of uncertainty begins at the first convergence zone, which is this green area, and extends out to the maximum sonar range. So somewhere in here, we think there's a contact in that yellow area. Conversely, a direct path contact will appear between your submarine and the first convergence zone. More on direct path contacts in a moment. But first, let's talk about convergence zones. At a simple level, convergence zones are ring-shaped areas surrounding a sonar receiver where sound can be detected as it travels in a curved path through water. Convergence zones only occur in deep water, and the distance between them varies according to environmental factors. As a general rule, however, they are around 30 nautical miles apart. Looking at the Rubus with the underwater sensors map setting on, we can see a shaded green circle representing the convergence zone. In some cases, you may see multiple convergence zones, but in this case, there is only one. Although the area of uncertainty extends to the sonar's maximum range, we know that this is a convergence zone contact, and therefore the ship must be somewhere within the convergence zone. If there are multiple convergence zones, the contact could be in any of them, but not between them. All right, so let's get a little closer and try to get some more information through passive sonar. So we'll continue. So that's interesting stuff. If you never read about convergence zones, if this makes no sense to you, I'm sure there's good Wikipedia articles out there. Um, I'm no expert on it, but this isn't uh, something I've never read about before. So I kind of have an idea. You can get there's some good stuff out there. I, I'll try to remember to link some of it in the description where you can go and, and see how this is uh, actually, uh, you know, some, some pictures to show you how that actually works. Let's go ahead and get started or restart. And oh, just every time I go to change it, it wants to give me another message. Okay, now we have a firm fix on the contacts course and speed, which we can tell by floating over it, commercial container vessel. Uh, I think that's the name of the container vessel, Post Panamax, and uh, click on it, and we get a picture of, I guess, a generic container vessel um, showing course at 120 degrees, 23 knots. That is a boogieing freighter. That guy is moving. So 
we can simply press F1 and click to contact the AI handle, or we can plot and intercept manually. A manual intercept can only be reliably made when the speed, course, and approximate position of the contact is known. The more accurate the data used to calculate the intercept, the more precise it will be. The method we are using here is to plot the contact's anticipated course and find a point along the path that we can reach, or preferably a little earlier than, the same time as the contact. So our contact is on a course of 120 at a speed of 23 knots. To plot a, plot a simple intercept for this contact, use the range and bearing tool, a control plus D, to place a reference point, control plus insert, 23 nautical miles, the speed of our contact, away from the nearest point of the area of uncertainty, at a bearing of 120 degrees the course of the contact. This is where the contact will be in an hour's time and should be roughly 12 nautical miles from the Rubus. So plot a course of the position we just identified, set your speed to cruise, which is 12 knots, which will have us arriving at the position before the ship. Now, this is really awkward. Uh, control plus D and Control insert and the way I read this we can either plot it from here or it's saying the nearest point of uncertainty which would be right here I suppose it's not explained in any detail so if we get control D and that changed the pointer that's nice click and we drag that out 23 uh, say about 23 kilometers, a little more, uh, 22, 23, this is really awkward, 23.4, and as soon as I take my hands off the mouse, it goes nuts, at 121 degrees, and then very carefully, control, insert, right there, there's our waypoint, or our, what do they call it here, an intercept point. Okay, for more distant contacts, you may need to place multiple reference points along the contact's intended course in order to find a suitable intercept point. It helps to label the reference points, select one at a time, and play. Okay, so we can do that. We can select that, hit Control R, and give it a name. Uh, I don't know, intercept. Can I spell that? intercept i tell you what the nuns would be proud of me the slower your submarine moves to get in place the less likely it will be detected as you get more practice with this technique you may wish to use a calculator or a spreadsheet to find the precise optimum intercept course and speed for your particular circumstances boys and girls <laughs> that is amazing yeah, of course this is you could have multiple applications open it runs in a window it's quite easy uh, but there you go uh, i'm amazed well the other thing we need to do is we need to get in here we need to plot that course hit escape we need to hit f2 we need to go to cruise speed which is 12 knots it says cavitation is impossible that's a good thing and let us resume and you can see and yeah, we're going to start clicking for where the center of the map is uh, i may need to change there we go this is one of the things that was recommended in that uh, tutorial how to move the map around uh, i'm not real fond of it but you can change it let's go ahead and uh, turn the speed up a little bit and hope that the message will, oh, there we go. As we close with the merchant, you may notice the contact zone of uncertainty grows as the sonar contact is lost before reappearing closer to the Rubus. So this must be the area of uncertainty in this uh, red area. Um, so, this is because the convergence zone allowed us to detect the target at a range greater than possible with a direct path sound transmission. As the ship moves through the convergence zone, contact will be lost once the ship enters direct path parameters or re-enters the convergence zone. The contact is updated with new information. So 
clearly this is very and I, I, I'm hesitant to say accurately modeled because I don't know of the I, I can't speak to the accuracy of the model but it certainly is modeling uh, how things are really done uh, at least I would assume and perhaps you know my he probably can't tell me but my my brother was actually a sonar tech on on a uh, SSN and perhaps I could ask him but uh, and, and he might just laugh at me it's been a little, you know, 30 years, but he probably still would have to laugh at me. Anyway, this merchant is noisy, so we can have a good idea of its position, speed, and heading. Quieter contacts can be much harder to pin down. Visual ID with the periscope is sometimes required. Rarely you need a need to use radar or active sonar to detect a particularly quiet contact. Be aware that using active sonar or radar will almost certainly give away your presence or position. Okay, fine. Let's go. And we're just blasting along at 15 to 1. We're going to get there. Okay. Come on now. It may not pop up before I hit my... Uh... And there we go. Now we are within torpedo range, which is this circle here. You may notice eight nautical miles seems a bit short for modern torpedo range. CMA and O's to a thought torpedo range is based on practical range. That is the range which a torpedo is likely to be able to acquire, target, and give chase if need be. Longer range shots are possible by altering the doctrine setting and allowing kinematic range to open a doctrine menu or use this size. Okay, they, all these things are all over here and uh, we're just not gonna get into this. Suffice it to say that can be changed. This could be useful engaging easy targets, but the further the range of shot, the less likely hit will be against any capable target. It's almost better to use the practical range. So if you use the auto attack method, the AI will automatically open fire when the ship is in range. If you have made an annual intercept, you can either hand the attack to the AI to complete automatically by pressing F1 and clicking the ship, or you can manually fire torpedoes by pressing Shift F1 and clicking the ship. So let's do a shift F1 and click on the target. Okay. Uh, got those, allocate weapons to select a target. Let's allocate two. And I don't see anything else target ships. Yeah, there's S601 Arubus. Okay, I don't see anything else to do here. So after your torpedoes fire, your submarine will have the word wire beneath it. This will restricted and will be restricted to 10 knot speed. This is because we're using wire guided torpedoes, which will be explained more in depth in later tutorials. Sink the ships. Okay, it's a big ship. It may take several hits to sink it. Also note that just as in real life, often large vessels are struck by torpedoes and CMA auto will take some time to sink in scenarios where conservation of ammunition is a factor. It may well pay to use one or two torpedoes on a large vessel and then wait to see if it sinks from flooding before expending any further ammunition. For the purpose of this tutorial, however, ammunition conservation is not a factor. Have at it. Well, let's back it up to five seconds and go. You can fire now, can't you? Well, did I do something wrong? And so let's pause. Hit shift F1. Target him. Allocate weapons. Target selected by weapon selector. Da, 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 da. What have I not done? I've allocated the weapons. Uh, Maybe that's what I should have done. Let's find out. Okay, so now the weapons are in the water. And the second weapon. 
let's go ahead and kick up the speed. Oh, one hit and it circled around, got another hit. Stop. All right, the message log is telling me, and I can bring that back on screen, I think. Yep. Torpedo F-21 Artemis number 18 is attacking ship with a base probability hit of 85%. Result 21 hit. And 100% penetration. Over here we had a miss and it re-attacked and hit and a 90% penetration. I don't know exactly what that means, but let's get on this thing. And you can see that it's got significant flooding. So we can fire again. Let's do shift F1. Let's allocate one. Allocate one salvo of one and let her rip. And boom. All right. And bring this window back and we'll look at it. Uh, 95%. Well, let's see, 90, looks like it fired two. Doing 13, 18, I'm not sure how many torpedoes <laughs> it launched now. Um, well, let's, one, let's take a look at Shift F1. Oh no, yeah, Shift F1. It did fire two because we started with 14. All right, well, let's see what happens if we let time run on, if she actually does do any additional flooding. Just watch this. It's not like we don't have time to put more weapons on her. She's down to eight knots. Now we can do it the automatic way. Let's stop, hit F1, uh, maybe I'm wrong, okay, here, F1, and see if that launches. Yep, sure enough did. And let's look at what it did. Now the message log doesn't say anything. All right, we'll go ahead and resume at five seconds and watch what looks to be two weapons closing. And you see we're making five knots wired. We're at 131 feet and Message log says 85% penetration, hmm. which I find interesting. It looks like it's just putting as many weapons out there as it needs to. We're down to 1.3 nautical miles. Although it's at the torpedo. Okay. Not us. That's the torpedo over here. And smack. Wow. Are we up to 10 torpedoes launched now? Well, let me do that. Stop. Select. Yeah, we've launched 10 torpedoes. Wow. That's a, uh, a big old girl. Or those torpedoes must be really tiny. And boom. Whoa, the scenario has concluded. You are now presented with evaluation for your performance. Dun, da, da, da.
losses and expenditures, 10 F21s. And uh, score change from zero to 100. Reason, event action. Okay, event win. And there you go. Well, it took longer than I anticipated. But uh, we'll just keep plugging along. What do you say uh, we come back next time and we try the next submarine tutorial? Hey, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you again soon. Hey, thanks for watching. If you click on that picture of Very Young Waz, you'll be subscribed so you'll never miss another video. Then click on that bell notification button, and please share and comment. See you again soon.